this is the Shintom model VP5000 video cassette player with color TV monitor, portable. Yeah, it's pretty big. But I we will find out how old it is soon enough. I want to say maybe 84 or 85. Uh but we'll, we'll address that when the time comes. But this is the thing. This was used probably for like salesmen and business, you know, presentations where you needed a portable VCR with a little TV monitor that you towed around with you. And at the time there was no such thing as a TV VCR combo. And uh, this was Shintom's solution we'll open it up it's just dirty but otherwise in excellent condition little color tv there and a shintom vcp tracking the top opens as such and the uh, TV controls auxiliary controls are right there and on the side here is your volume the TV monitor switch and an earphone jack so it has line level AV inputs and a Varactor diode tuner or at least I think it does picture tube is almost completely flat on that So yeah, this thing, other than being a little dirty, is in mint condition almost. And I got it for a good deal on eBay. And the antenna for the TV is still perfect. There's one on eBay that was in terrible condition. They wanted like $120 for it. I'm like, what are you smoking? <laughs> so let's just see what this does in its current state before restoration. Let's see, TV. Oh, yeah. Cool. It just has a blank screen for the video line level input. So, um, okay, we'll put power on. Okay. Well, different got audio. I don't know where the speaker is, but we'll find out. I'm not expecting much because I also saw the tape counter belt was completely broken. Play. Oof. Well, we all know what that horrible sound means. The belt is broke or probably looped around itself in there. Definitely doesn't sound good. TV, it looks like they got the brightness up all the way. Let's go ahead and get this thing apart. See what we can do. And this is on the bottom of the unit. It does have little feet you put on to prop it up. But it can also lay flat. Little dude. Come here. Hey. What are you doing? Yeah, you little dude. <laughs> okay, we got the top cover off. So this is what it looks like in here. I'm assuming 
Is this just glued on or? This might be where a speaker is. Does it, yeah, the handle's still on there. Wow, interesting. Oh, this is getting very interesting. This is the bottom of the TV, so 1985. Little dude. And this is the power supply for the TV. Weighs quite a bit. <laughs> I know Porta Video was one of those companies I seen rental units since they got brought up in the previous video. Shintom and Funai from the quote unquote vintage Funai era are not the same. Shintom only supplied them with the their transport, the tape transport. The rest is Funai. They have nothing to do with each other otherwise. Uh, this unit's purely a Shintom. And I'm willing to bet. I want to take this apart and see who actually made this. It's made in Japan. Uh, we'll see who this little TV is actually made by. And I don't think Shintom made their made uh, TVs, but this is getting pretty interesting to see what's going on. So this port of video and Shintom are related just as well. So it's it's weird. Interesting. This is the side of the TV. back I have the power supply disconnected and here's the inside of this it does have um, this for hooking to a regular TV made in Japan so interesting like this is actually much better made than the cheapies usually get for twin lead use interesting and on to the VCP. The VCP itself is uh, the VP1000. Uh, when we take it apart, we're gonna find it's not the same. Shintom, when they made their own, was just entirely their own. And it'd be interesting, I don't know if this plays all three speeds or not. It does have a four digit tape counter, belts broken. But being a Shintom, the mechanism will be identical. It's very clean. Got any new brakes, the one completely disintegrated there. Yeah, this one has a steel plate on the bottom. And uh, it says auto replay, just like on the, pet, on the container. I also notice it has some damage. I don't know if that was from shipping or what but it's there and I can probably try to repair that cleanly. Yeah, completely different layout in the rear. And power supply. Another interesting thing on how this one comes apart. Had these little rubber bumpers on top, not glued on. They just uh, slip down in there and lock in place. Prime them up, access to the screws to take the top cover off. Well, as you can see, it's similar, but different. Shintong mechanism, but the rest is Shintong. This would be a good comparison. I'm gonna, I should try it outside before I install it back in the container, because I, I believe this was also sold as a separate uh, VCP as well. Compare how the two perform. So it's similarly laid out, but its electronics are completely different on this than the Funai. That's why I'm fascinated by these. They were very well made. And yes, they started off as rental machines, but shortly after they built home machines that were built just as well, like tanks. Unlike the Funai, where the front panel contained all the logic controls, this one simply pops off. Rather heavy and thick plastic, both that and this. Interesting. There's a date. Uh, looks like if I'm 
reading this correctly. It's 1985, but is it January or July? I, I don't, I can't make it out what it is. I wanna say it's July. That seems about right. So we have access to the front. Wait, it says JVC. Ooh, the mysteries are getting more intense here. So this is JVC on this front panel. Weird. Some interesting quirks about this. Shintom, even though there was connectors right there, soldered everything in place. Weird. So maybe it's um, socketed on the board. Let's hope. Yeah, for some reason, Shintom decided to solder everything in place, even though there were sockets right there. And uh, when I lift up on this, I mean, I got enough wiggle room where I can flip this upside down. But yeah, you see, it's not definitely not the same as the Funai. This is totally Shintom's own design. Well, sure enough. None of the belts are, had survived. Complete black goo. Flywheel here. Odd, that belt appears still to be good. And the loading motor belt turned to goo. Ooh, fun. Okay, I managed to get all the parts with rubber stuck to them off and separated. Hard parts doing that motor. It, won't hurt it like that at all. And uh, the flywheel and some other pieces. Do a 60 minute run at 50 degrees Celsius. And we'll just let that thing go for a while. The simple green's gonna turn black and it's gonna smell like Doritos. I don't know why. The last time I did this, it smelled like Doritos. I have one flat belt left in stock that's going to fit this. And I can't really do this one-handed, but in the order belts, it's the circumference of the belt, not the diameter. So I have to, I'm just doing this with my fingers, but I make, make sure it's like flat and relaxed when you do it. And whatever length that is, multiply it by two, and that'll give approximately what size belt you need. Because this is my last flat belt, and I got more v uh, Funai and Shintom based uh, VCRs and VCPs to restore. So, and there we go. Belt's on, it's good. Oddly, this belt here is still perfectly fine. And it shows no sign of deterioration or stretching or anything. I just have to clean it with some alcohol again. But uh, it is properly lubricated. And um, there is this belt here that's been replaced. So that's it on the bottom. And we have a tiny tape counter belt here I need to replace after I get all the... It'll focus the black goo off everything. I got the pulley for it there. Also stepping up my game with the uh, syringes for the grease. Got this now, and I've had this for years. This thing is completely broken. So there's no more grease left in there, so I'm throwing that out. We're gonna use this to deposit grease in the machine. We got it almost back together. However, the dew sensor was glued down to that metal tab there, came off. So I have to go ahead and re-glue that. Okay, we are glued back down. Well, let's plug it in. All right, one of the first things we're gonna have to do is the tape counter belt is completely liquefied, even though it's it's solid, but as soon as you touch it, it melts. It's still wrapped around this um, real table spindle. But in addition, we do need new brakes because uh, they too have uh, melted or worn out. So we'll take care of that right now. 
Well, we got all the old material. It's not focusing off where the brakes were. Nice and clean. Clean the spindles because I'm gonna put fresh grease on them. I'm gonna ultrasonic them both just because, but uh, get the old grease out. But this belt residues crap, and that pulley there's for the tape counter, so I gotta do that one as well. All right, three belts, squares, same thickness, gonna be put on. All right, this one only has three brakes in it because it doesn't do reverse search. So once the glue sets, I'll trim off the excess on the one side, which is the side I used to hold the, with the needle nose to get it in place. Now we're back. Time to put the reels back in or the spindles for it, I should say. Got the old belt gunk off. One of the white part goes on this side for the tape, the reel sensor. But first, we got this filled up with grease. I'm gonna squirt a little bit in here. Far in does this go? Not used to this one yet. I don't know how how much I gotta push. To... There we go. Don't need a lot. Just wanna get some. Which one am I missing? Oh, this one here pulled up the um, little nylon washer when I pulled it off. So put that back on. Now. Um, Food nuggets. Need to take a small screwdriver and push the brakes back. Slide it in if I can. That's one. There's the other. Okay. There we go. First one's in. Oh shit. I to relieve the pressure on the syringe. I'm still oozing out. Now I'll relieve the pressure. Okay, fresh coat of grease on that. This nylon washer is in place already. Let's do it. Yeah, that's right, there's only the one there. Put the little clamps back on. What am I grabbing here? I, I grab them both. They stick to you. Try to reuse the original ones. In worst case, I have new ones to use. These just merely hold them down. And stuck to my finger again. I just hate these. These don't want to ever cooperate. Okay, got it. No, this one didn't even go on, you bitch.
Ron. Life off any excess grease that oozed out through the top. Where we left off last was installing the tape counter belt. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing right now. Oh, look at it there. Come around here. Grab a hold. Let go, what the hell you call it? And the belt's twisted. Let's see. Why are we twisting here? It's way over twisting. Is it like that? I think I got it. thing I can't see is, I just want to make sure I definitely don't have it twisted on there. Okay, it's square, and it's square. Okay, we're good. Alright, so now we got tape counter is now functional. Uh, now, before we uh, test it to make sure it even works, everything. I'm gonna squirt some fresh. Man, it's picking up hairs everywhere from somewhere. Alright, let's try that again. Let me grab it. Pull that out of the way. Do right along the edge so it also spreads to the bottom. You know when it goes on. Okay. Oh, oh, that's I gotta remember to relieve the pressure, otherwise it's gonna keep squirting out. Just like a caulking gun. But yeah, I can control this this is so much nicer on this. I can control it. Oh, it an air bubble. It. Whenever it goes to operate, it'll smooth itself out. All right, pull back, relieve pressure. Um, what else? Okay, I lubricated the spindles, lubricated the um, impedance roller. Uh, I mean, it's been sitting a while, so I'm gonna wipe off any excess oil lubricated the pinch roller. I already cleaned the pinch roller too while I was at it. Okay. That should do it. I'm going to go get the test jig and see what this thing does. Alright, here's the first test. Yep, upside down. I had to stop recording because I had a issue where I put a t you know the tape in or the test jig anyways and nothing happened and I can't multitask so that's why I stopped it that said it was a real simple problem but I ended up First, checking all my connections first. There's this micro switch right there, right below my finger. It was bent down by 45 degrees uh, from that point there, but which means it was it was but it was still open. So whenever you put the tape in, see watch what it does. See it makes contact, closes the contacts. It knows there's a tape in the machine. 
Well, it was bent down so far, it still didn't see the tape, so it was still not going to let it operate. It must have happened when I was moving things around, because it's, you know, uh, trying to flip this over, change the belt, flip it upright, put it in the place, it must have got caught on something. But that fixed it. And so I can probably demonstrate everything now while this is down here. It's very quiet. Tape uh, power is on already. So it doesn't look like it has any special programming different than the Funai, uh, but it does not have search. I think this may also be a standard play only unit, but we'll find out shortly. Fast forward, brakes are working good. Now I'll leave it fault out. Yeah. And pause, mix that light up right there. And it has, and that's your uh, noise cancel on the pause. So yeah, everything works as should it should. So next step is to go ahead and clean the tape path and heads and everything. Blah, blah. So uh, this is the final parts to it. Just clean the heads. Doesn't appear to be have very. It appears to have very little use. Has some. Has some crud build up on the drum but it's like the pinch roller I mean everything's pretty much spotless just looking at this clean the impedance roller uh, guide posts stuff like that there's not much built up on it but good practice let's see how I can the other direction. And yeah, like I said, these are just those chamois swab sticks. Yeah, see hardly anything came off. Just a little bit of residue. That's about it. So that's a low hours machine in good condition. It's just, it's uh, 36 years old. age on some things and I just had to take care of that. I'm going to do the uh, capstan now. It's a little dirty. Let's see. Do this instead. Put this in. Do that because it won't interfere with the end sensor. And I'll just That's some crud build up on the capstan. Actually, I may have been from the pinch roller when I used rubber rejuvenator on it. Yeah, it's not coming off now. It's fine, I'll just take one little wipe on this. should do it. And uh, my last step. Back and 
find an available outlet. Magnetization complete. All right, now we'll do one more test. Uh, let's start off with this. I think it's just st still just the standard play only unit. Let's just see what it does. This is an extended play tape. Now nah, it's running at its standard play. So this is still a standard play only unit. Which means it'll have the wider width heads in it. I don't know if they're the 58 microns or not, but it does get damn good picture. And still frame is near perfect. With only two heads. So let's uh, run it through its paces here. I'm going to turn it this way so I can watch it. But uh, I'm going to hit fast forward. Remember, this is that noisy tape. I'm going to hit stop. And uh, borrow this for a second. Tape is taut. And just rewind. I'm <laughs> Tape is taut. So it's. That's working. Let me fast forward past the beginning here. Actually, before I do that, I need to test the end sensor, make sure it's working. How far do we... Oh, that's that, um, I remember I noticed it said auto repeat. There's no switch for that. So as soon as it hits the um, beginning of the tape, it'll start over. That's interesting. Again, this was, um, judging how this is set up, this is designed for businesses, presentations. You set up like a booth, set this little guy up, and let it play. There's probably a jumper in here somewhere to disable that. And this whole thing, like the whole DCP and TV thing, they just use off-the-shelf parts to keep costs down. All right, go into playback and let's see what we do here. Just uh, inspecting where the tape rides. Make sure there's nothing uh, happening that shouldn't be. Nope, everything's riding where it should be. What about the... Yep, that's riding where it should be. Impedance roller. We're good. And here is the TV. Uh, it's kind of hard to get an image on the camera. The TV looks really good though in person. Let me see if I turn the contrast down. Grayscale is perfect. I know it looks bluish on the camera, but it's perfect in person. That's perfect. Uh, I don't have to do anything to this TV. I did want to try to take it apart to see um, who the OEM was on it. But uh, it's a little complicated to take it apart, so I'm not going to, especially if it doesn't need anything. Um, it did have very scratchy controls, but luckily I was able to just lightly spray deoxid in from above and it worked. So no problems there. 
the um, brand on it, even though it's not listed on the front, it's Porta Video. And Porta Video back then was a US based company. It says Porta Video International. I don't have any information on them other than they did take some Shintom VCPs and rebadge them as their own. So it's kind of odd that this Shintom VCP and Shintom the case utilize this Porta Video branded TV. I don't know who the OEM is. I think I may have said that. But anyways, the TV is made in Japan, which is important. So it is high quality and produces a really sharp picture with nice color. Um, this is probably the first time in 36 years the little kickstand right there has been used it does have a carry handle on top but it's this is glued in place from above so you, you know i'm gonna finish cleaning it a little piece there and here's the handle for it uh there is a cover for this but it was taken off to utilize the uh main cover we saw initially so there's your volume control a headphone jack and a line level switch because it has twin lead UHF, twin lead VHF, internal or external antenna selection, and line in, line out, AV inputs. And what they did so this would fit in the case, they put a 90 degree barrel plug on here to plug into the main power. So what they did, they just took off the shelf parts to keep the cost down on this and then assembled it. It does have electronic tuning and it's programmable um, with non-volatile memory because like if I go to position three there's probably labels you stick over top of this the UHF lights up see there's certain channels that are programmed on this so it's just like uh, older VCR you'd uh, Put it on the uh, slot you want. Use the channel search up and down and it puts it in memory. So there's your controls right there. This is after just a quick wipe down. I'm gonna do a full detail on it in a minute. And uh, video on, if I switch it to the tuner, that goes off and bam, there's your tuner. I'm not running the antenna system here but pick up something right there I don't know what did it do anything when I touch it no. but yeah then you can flick it back on there perfect okay. and then that's the power supply that connects to the back of the TV so this is like AC here, probably had a battery pack that would connect on just as well. Yeah, and here's the, some information there. Speakers on this side here. What does this say? I think it's the CRT right there I'm looking at. Oh wait, there's the uh, flyback right there. Well, there was one adjustment I did want to do. Um, there is a center detent position on the brightness. And when I initially showed it to you with the proper black level, and let me back off to with the black level properly set, I had it turned on almost all the way down. And when I was looking through there with the camera uh, flash, I saw the, the G2 control, your screen control. So I was able, to, it didn't take turn much, but I had, I turned it down just a little bit. And now the brightness on the center detent is perfect. You turn it up from there. As soon as you see, watch, as soon as I take it off center detent, there 
And it's not blue in person, it's actually a neutral gray, so that's exactly how it should be. And, and you know, as soon as I hit D10, it's a perfect black with the contrast all the way down. So now, <clears throat> if I go to color bars, they have a lot more contrast to them. They're not as washed out looking. In fact, it's overloading the camera a bit. Let me see if I can uh, lock on the exposure to this. Maybe it'll clear itself up. And here it is from back here. I got the contrast up all the way, but yeah, now the, like the blue and the red, they are much deeper and brighter, like a, a lot more contrast to it compared to before, even though I set the user brightness, which is not the same thing to compensate. So yeah, because really that's the only thing that would drift is like, you know, CRT use. That's why you got to tune them up every once in a while. But grayscale is absolutely perfect on this. And I was able to use this tiny screwdriver to reach into the vent and adjust the screen control. Focus is fine. And on the bottom here is the nameplate information, the TV 4000, but made in Japan. And it seems to be a rather well built, really nice picture. Manufactured December, 1985. Yeah, the CRT isn't completely flat. It has a slight curve to it, but it, it almost looks like it's completely flat on this. And this did, does have the original um, sunshade on there. So I'll just click it back on. Just noticed it. There we go. Here it is all cleaned up and polished ready to be put back in audio works fine too which I don't have hooked up so I have to leave that out okay and then we got the outer shell all polished up turn my microfiber pretty dull it's not showing up that well on camera but even though I cleaned it initially you know I did the detailing on it now but now it's all nice and shiny and looks like brand new again and here it is tape counter Similar to the Funai VP1500, but again, not the same at all. Only thing in common between the two is the Shintom tape transport. But this one is solely a Shintom design. And how does it compare? It's actually com very comparable to the 1990 VCR650 I just did. And the... I'm going to do this as a period correct movie since this is 1985. Put this there. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually, if you stay tuned in the next video, I'm going to do a direct hookup capture between the Funai and the Shintom here for comparison purposes. The Funai also has better linear audio, too. Uh, this one, that's the only other adjustment I had to make was uh, the tape head, or the audio control head azimuth. Uh, it was loud, but the treble was a little lacking. Turned it, locked right in, nice and loud and clear. So, I'm going to... It's going to sound very similar to the VP1500 by Funai. As mentioned, I don't think Shintom did any different programming on this, as this works pretty much the same. And then play. I can't believe you loaned me your car without telling me it had a blind spot. 
I could have been too. Now, now, Biff, now, I never noticed that uh, the car had any blind spot before when I would drive it. Hi, son. Uh, what are you, blind, McFly? It's there. How else do you explain that wreck out there? Now, Biff, um, can I, can I assume that your uh, insurance is going to pay for the damage? Well, my insurance? It's your car. Your insurance should pay for it. I, I want to know who's going to pay for this. I spilled beer all over when that car smashed into me. Who's going to pay my cleaning bill? <laughs> and then pause, and I'll adjust the noise cancel on here. There you go. Two head VCR. Uh, well, I haven't seen the suits up yet, but you know, I, I figured since they were due to... Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Oh. Uh, think, Miss Fly. Oh. Think. I gotta have time to get them retyped. Uh, do you realize what would happen if I handed my reports in your handwriting? I'll get fired. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Would you? Of course not, Beth. No, I wouldn't want that. And being the Shinton mechanism, though, they both have the same loading door, like this, where it comes up and out at an angle, so I like that. And here they are side by side. The 1984 Funai VP-1500 and the 1985 Shinton VP-1000. Very similarly laid out but they're two totally different animals. Uh, the, uh, they're very similar cabinet sizes, but they're not the same. Um, the thing in common between the two is the Shintom tape transport and accessories. That's the only thing in common between the two. Otherwise, uh, I mean, feature-wise, they're the same, you know, power, the Funai does not have a do indicator. The Shintom does. And that was that thing we re glued. Uh, Shintom does have a four digit tape counter. And uh, they both have noise cancel. This one calls it fine picture. And behind, they are similar in how they're laid out. Uh, I mean, they are similar, but they're two totally different on the inside. And the RF switch um, channel is on the bottom on this one. But stay tuned for the next video where I will do a direct hookup between this and this one to show you the comparison saying, hey, they're not the same and the Funai is better. That's why I'm so fascinated by it. And this will be a subject. That, this one here is a subject of another video coming up. This one's a 1990. So, you know, I got one more year of the good, very good food on it. So then they went to total crap. One thing I did notice is the differences. Even though it's the same um, tape transport. Listen to how the food eye sounds. see what this one does in contrast and one final look at it before I close it up it is complete and here it is all back together once again the Shintom VP 5000 video cassette player of Keller TV monitor so it stands up like that 
I already have it uh, plugged in. Also note how it says, uh, connecting the port of video to your TV. It even mentions the TV mod number. I think port of video would have had to have been like a brand of Shintom or something. I, I don't know how that works, but they were all Shintom based units. So I think. So yeah. Open that. And yeah. Open that. And just for fun, there's the TV controls. Don't need to do anything in there. And then you on your side, you got your volume and So instructions for use, TV instructions. Okay, so now power on and TV on. Oh yeah, I don't think I showed it. I have the little stands making it propped up at an angle here. So I already got the tape queued up. 1985, 1985, and it doesn't stay up because it's tilted. <laughs> so tape's queued to where I want it. Okay. And same thing, like I'll hit pause, noise cancel. Again, this is just a two head machine, no special effects heads or anything. On standard play, near perfect. Gotta love it. Let me do an auto lock on this. Other than that, there's no forward or reverse scan. So yeah, that little monitor gets very good picture, very good contrast. Thanks a lot, kid. I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. Yeah, this one, the only three lights on the front, power, do, and still. So. Oh my God. And we looked at, this was posted on the Television Collectors Facebook group. We got a close look at the TV, and it is, it's a, they stuck, just stuck a Sony Trinitron in there. You could see the cylindrical shape of the tube. That was poorly done. You know, there's something I haven't told you about the night we made that So yeah, this is it. So I'm gonna stop this. Rewind it a little bit, so I'm gonna use this part of the tape for something later.
stuff at probably around 1600 on the tape counter. Yeah, there you go. Come on, autofocus. Inject. Tape back down. TV off. VCP off. Lid with auto replay sticker close. Front cover close with furry latches. Put the power cords back in the back and it's portable once again. So hope you enjoyed this video and hit like and subscribe. Shindong.